don't know. We might probably fall off. Back. Lean back on there. Yeah. 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 The... I'm going to go on to that. Mike Hookham isn't your yeah, average yeah, politician. Yeah. Well, right, be careful, yeah, Mike. Come on. The UKIP MEP and former military man is on a fact-finding mission in Calais. Be careful, Mike. That's how easy it is. And I can be over that now. And I'll probably do the same there because there's a gap there with no Danic coil on it. So I would be over in there and I'm onto that track. He wanted to show us how bad the port security is and how easy it is for migrants That's to enter Britain is. through the Channel Tunnel. To be fair, Mike, you've done that pretty quickly. Yeah. And I'm 61. So you'll get a young lad, early 20s, fit as a butcher's dog, he'd be over that. So this is where you tweeted that picture? This is where the picture was taken. Last week, on Mike's first visit to Calais, he caused a media stir by tweeting out a picture of an asylum seeker he'd found in a bush. He claimed on Twitter to have stopped more illegals from entering the port perimeter than the Eurotunnel police. It's led some to accuse him of being a vigilante. It's ridiculous. Fancy saying, no, we shouldn't have vigilantes, we should have police. We should have police patrolling these fences, not vigilantes. Who wants vigilantes? It's ridiculous. But you were patrolling them last week? I wasn't patrolling them. I came down and I stumbled on 25 migrants sitting in a wood. I didn't actively look for 25 migrants. I didn't actively look to stop them coming through a fence. I actually I stumbled on them. They, they happened to be there. Mike tells me that when he visited last week, the fence had been opened up. So it looks like they've stuck some new razor wire in. There's a, there's a hole there. There's another one here. So this is obviously, you know, they're the regularly coming here because it's such a, a poor fence in, as it is and it's easy to get through. It's out the way, nobody's not overseen by anybody and, you, you know, you, you throw and you're in. What would, you, what would you do here? How would you make it secure? You're an army man. Well, it's got to be a new fence. The, the, whole, the whole fence has got to come down and they've got to build a new fence. They've got to put something else in there, you know, a double fence or something with, with motion sensors. Mike wanted to speak to some asylum seekers about why they wanted to come to the UK. What's happening here then? We drove to the jungle, the camp where many migrants live, but the police got there first. We went to investigate along a line of backed up lorries until we got close to the camp entrance. So you think all of these drivers here are pretty scared at the moment? Um, look. This has got to be intimidating. You're coming to where? Oh, we've just had a rock thrown at the police there. I mean, this is, this is not ideal, is it? This is not ideal. So the police have actually just said that they're throwing stones over here, so we should probably actually leave, Mike. But this is what you're worried about for, um, for truckers. I'm worried, I'm worried for, for the British drivers approaching the ferry port now. These people are now throwing rocks. See the chaos it's causing now? Back up this traffic. You understand the desperation, don't you? I understand the desperation, but this, this, this is illegal. These people are illegal. What's happening here is illegal. You know, it's a standoff with the police. They're trying to break into and causing criminal damage, trying to get onto British trucks. But look, see those kids over there? They're on the red T-shirt over there. That kid's probably 14. But is he, is he the one that's causing the bother, or is it the older ones, and he's just coming along for the ride? You can, you, whatever, you, can see that that, you can see that that's a child, and they're probably say, not. Whatever goes on, this is illegal. These people are illegal, uh, and they should not be coming through, in, through our borders this way. There is legal ways of coming into, into Great Britain, and that's the way. So what would you do with them? This is not my problem, what I should do with them. It's what the French should be doing with them. We weren't particularly successful at finding any asylum seekers to talk to at the jungle, so Mike went to another area near the railway. Hello. Speak English. English. Nobody. 
That seems a dot on a talk. A man from Eritrea eventually agreed to talk to us without showing his face. He wants to join his wife, who is already in the UK. Just what, you know, what, what's your intentions tonight? Are you going to try and get on one of the trains into the UK, into England? Yeah, we are trying to go to England, but now I'm, I'm, I'm going to my home, to jungle, yes, because no, no way or no any direction to try to today. Because I'm, I'm looking here, more police and the, the control are also so strong, so I'm going to my home to sleep now. So you are back to the jungle? Back to the jungle, yeah. Yeah, you're going back there, so you, you'll try again tomorrow night? I will see, maybe tomorrow, yeah. after tomorrow, yeah. after, or after one week, yes, we will see, but it is so difficult you now. So where, 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 where are you from originally? Eritrea. 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 Yeah. And what was your journey from Eritrea? Yes, I, they may be for one year because I stayed in Sudan eight months as well as in Libya three months. Sudan, Libya, and then from Libya yes, to, to Italy. Lampedusa? No, no, to Italy. To from, Italy. To Italy. To Italy. Yeah, yeah, to Italy. And Italy to France? From Italy to France, yeah. Well, this guy, this guy has a pretty. That's a pretty long way to come. Yeah. You don't feel at all no. sorry. No. If it's sorry for him at all. No, it's, it, it, it's a, legal, a legal entrance. It, you know, it should be coming there. How can you not feel sorry for someone who's coming from Eritrea? It's war-torn country. Yeah, but why isn't it? Why is incredible isn't... journey? You, I mean, you can say that. You can say all sorts of things. You can say that they don't have a right to enter the UK, but you can't say you don't feel sorry for someone like that. Can you? Well, there is a little bit of sympathy, but but you know, you know, it's it the. Seem and, like there's much sympathy. Well. It's at the, an illegal entrance, you know, he's, he's coming illegally and he should be trying the legal ways, you know. And there's thousands more like him going to be doing this. As dusk approached, we saw more and more migrants approaching the railway lines. It's over there, there's a woman who's rolling, who's rolled along so that the, the cameras can't see her. And the police haven't seen her, so she's hiding in that undergrowth over there. And you can just about make the pink jumper. What, what, what should you do about that? Nothing, it's nothing. Why, why should I do it? I mean, I'm being accused of being a vigilante. It's not my job, to, it's up to the police. You've got a vehicle coming down here now. It's up to the police and uh, whoever you've got, private security guards, whatever, to, to stop her if she gets onto the track. It's not, I'm here to see what's going on. You've seen a lot today. What's the one thing you would take from your fact-finding mission? The, the thing I take away now is that they, they have increased uh, security uh, and they are endeavouring to increase the fencing on, on the, the tunnel. The tunnel is the weak point now. You're never going to stop these people trying to, to get into the UK by this method. You have to stop them coming across the Mediterranean.